am Michael Santos with Earning Freedom and Prison Professor. These are the two websites that I operate to try and spread more awareness about the criminal justice system and about how people can move through it successfully. If you're facing challenges with the criminal justice system, I want you to know why I can help you. I want to let you know that this is the time to begin preparing for the best possible outcome. And I want you to know that it's not easy. It is absolutely a heavy lift. I mean, let's face it, people who have been indicted are facing challenges that are different from anything they've expected before. They're about to be separated from the people they love and the people who love them. So it's a really heavy lift, but it's, a, it's something that an individual needs to be preparing for because there are so many people who go into the system without any insight, and as a consequence of that, they end up making decisions that expose them to longer sentences, to more difficult circumstances inside, and my job is to try and help them understand what they can do to prepare. You see, the prison system is really, or the criminal justice system is really the great equalizer. It doesn't matter how much money you have, what level of education you have, it doesn't matter what socioeconomic background you come from, or, or perhaps I should say that there is some controversy over that right now in this era. But the reality is once you get sucked into this system, the chances are very probable that you're going to face a sentencing hearing. And if you face a sentencing hearing, for many people, there's a likelihood that prison will follow. I mean, look at this chart from the Central District of California, uh, the United States Sentencing Commission, put out a, its report, it just showed how many people get, get locked in. And you can see it on this, on this chart that I put up on the screen beside me, where it just shows, you know, for, for drug offenses, how many people are actually set, convicted and sentenced for child porn, how many of the, of the, of the population are, are convicted and sentenced, firearms, larceny, fraud. It's one of the growing sectors for white-collar crime, fraud defenses, white-collar crimes of people who get sucked in and, and prepared for, or, or have to go into the prison system. And, you know, it, regardless of what happens, if an individual is indicted, there's about a 90% chance a conviction is going to follow if it's in the federal sentence. But it doesn't matter if it's the state or the federal system, right? If somebody gets trapped in, if, if there's a sentencing here that's going to follow, it behooves every defendant to take action and start preparing for a best possible outcome. That's what this work is about. It's about removing the fear of the unknown. It's about recognizing that the time is now to begin preparing for the best possible outcome. And you can't really outsource all that work to your defense attorney. It doesn't matter whether you have a, a federal defender or, or a, a government uh, attorney that's paid for by the government because you're indigent, or whether you have a multi-million a multi -million dollar legal team defending you. The reality is, You've got to understand what's coming ahead. And that's really where I try to provide value is helping people understand what's coming. What can I do to position myself for the best possible outcome? Because if you can figure that out, you, you really go a long ways toward moving the needle toward the best possible outcome. That's what I try and offer. And you don't have to take my word for it. As I told you in the beginning, you know, I host a podcast called Earning Freedom where you can sit there and listen to more than 200 episodes, nearly 300 episodes now where I've interviewed formerly incarcerated people who've gone through the system and they're talking about what they've learned, listen to what I teach and determine whether I am the guy to help you through this process. I absolutely know I can help, but I can't do it if you don't pick up the phone and call, if you don't reach out to me. I'm the easiest guy in the world to find. Every one of these slides has my cell phone number, my email address. Reach out. Uh, if I can't help you personally because you can't afford my fee, and I can tell you I don't work for free, uh, I've got a number of free resources that I do give away because I'm absolutely passionate about helping people find their way through struggle. And one of the things that I want to talk about is although you may have a great defense attorney working for you, you've got to do your part as well. I can tell you if you have a federal defender, you've got some of the best representation in town. And the reason for that is because federal defenders really are, are, are the true believers. They are people who went through school and really educated on the, themselves on the system and they want to fight for individuals to get out of prison. But you've got to do your, some, some of the lifting yourself. And I'm going to talk about that through the rest of this uh, free webinar. I, I want you to, to recognize that if you are 
indicted, if you are facing a charge from the criminal justice system, you've got to start preparing yourself for sentencing. Even if you think you're going to walk, you've got to prepare. And you begin preparing by understanding all of the stakeholders in this system. Who are they? You know, you're going to have a federal judge, a federal judge who's very likely a former prosecutor or an individual who has a very cynical perspective of every defendant who comes before him. Understand that. Don't cry about it. Don't complain about it. Just understand this is the environment in which you're going. Because if you can understand that, you can then take action to prepare. What is the judge thinking? What does he expect from me? What does he hear from every other defendant who comes before him? If you can figure out the answers to those questions, you are going to significantly advance your prospects for influencing the better outcome. But you've got to understand the playing field. Understand the prosecutor. Who is the prosecutor? What does the prosecutor want? Does he want justice or does the prosecutor want a conviction? Don't cry about it. Don't complain about it. Just understand it. Understand that that prosecutor is a career professional, likely wants to advance his career to a higher level of prosecutorial power, or perhaps he wants to be a judge, or perhaps he wants to be a defense attorney and get a a multi-million dollar signing bonus by going with a white glove law firm. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you understand you cannot change the past, but what can you do today to begin influencing a better future? If you can answer those questions, you are going to significantly advance the ball of of moving toward a better outcome. Who else is a player in this this, uh, stage, right? You've got a probation officer. And who's the probation officer? It's a very important individual because he's going to interview individuals after they've been convicted and conduct what's called a pre-sentence investigation report, sometimes known as a PSI, sometimes known as a PSR, whatever it's known, make sure that you are well prepared before you have your meeting with that probation officer. Because if you are, you can start, you can start uh, sowing some seeds that will influence the outcome of that PSI. And that PSI is going to have an enormous influence on your life, not only at sentencing, but also through the prison experience. It will influence where you serve your time. It will influence whether you have opportunities to participate in the one program that can significantly reduce your time in prison. It will influence whether you can have the opportunity to go to a residential reentry center or alternative to incarceration. It may influence your time on supervised release and getting off at the soonest possible time. These are real factors. And I encourage you to make sure that you are well prepared before you go to that uh, meeting with your probation officer. Who else is a player in this game? You've got to understand your defense attorney. Your defense attorney is likely a, a, a very, is fighting valiantly for you to get the lowest possible sentence. Everybody knows that regardless of what client your defense attorney is representing, he's going to be talking about the same thing. Why my client doesn't deserve a long prison sentence or a prison sentence at all? Why my client is, is worthy of a lower possible sanction? These are all factors that everybody knows. But the reality is there's one individual, there's one more person here that is extremely influential at this sentencing hearing. You know the judge likely a former prosecutor. You know, the prosecutor wants to get a conviction, sees you as a trophy. You are the individual. By getting a conviction on you, that prosecutor is going to strengthen his resume. He's going to strengthen his stats. He wants to win. And how does he win? By putting people in prison, by sending long sentences, by putting long financial penalties. How about the probation officer? Basically is going to parrot what the prosecutor says and give the government's version of events. Defense attorney says, you know, for any client, wants to get him the lowest possible answer. Who else is missing? You, the defendant. It's crucial that the defendant works hard to prepare a proper sentencing narrative, a proper allocution. And in order for you to do that, you truly need to understand the system because you are the only individual who can move the needle here. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn from people who've gone before you. Learn from like my friend Daniel. An individual who had a high net worth, who had a business, who truly believed that he was innocent, but he didn't understand the system. And as a consequence of his not understanding the system, he made some really bad decisions or decisions that he later came to regret. 
because he didn't prepare for sentencing. And as a consequence of his not preparing for sentencing, he ended up making some decisions that exposed him to a much longer term, and he served that term in much more difficult circumstances. I've got a picture of the oil truck there because Dan was the president of an oil company. And I'll talk about him more if, uh, to, as a teaching tool because I like to give case studies. I like to give real examples of how advancing your knowledge of the system can position you for the best possible outcome. You've got to understand the ancillary consequences of making bad decisions. Those, do, those decisions are separating you from your family. They can make the difference of whether you are going to have a child or you're, you're never going to have a child or whether you can participate in your child's life or whether you can participate in your marriage or whether you can continue to live a life of fulfillment and meaning and relevance. All of this is predicated on the decisions that you make at the earliest stage of your journey. You got to understand what's next. You got to understand what's coming, what's ahead. You can't live in denial like that individual who's, who's the ostrich with his head buried in the sand, thinking that if, you know, the, the ostrich thinks that if the lions don't see him, if he doesn't see the lions, the lions won't see him and he's going to escape getting attacked. Well, no, that doesn't work. And it doesn't work for individuals who approach their problems with the criminal justice system living in denial. Understand, set a plan, take action. That's the key to success. You've got to find a way to build hope. And I'm an individual who knows about that because I served 26 years in federal prison. If I had had insight to what was coming, I would have made different decisions. I knew people that I met while I was incarcerated who put a pistol in their mouth because they were so, they just didn't see the vision of moving forward. They had no hope. I remember speaking with one guy who told me, oh, this is where I ended up. This is not where you end up. This is a way station. The time is now to position yourself for a better outcome. You've got to pursue this path that you can inspire yourself, that you can inspire your family, that you can inspire your community. And when you do this, you feel stronger. You feel as if you can really make it. It's a win-win situation of preparation. Preparation is the best way for you to position yourself for the lowest possible sentence and serving it in the best possible environment. And it all begins with your allocution. That's when you are ready to stand there for sentencing in the court and you are ready to begin expressing to the judge what happened. How did you get here? Always remember, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Don't live in denial. Take action. Understand that you have the power to write a personal sentencing narrative. If you don't know how to do it, that's one of the services that I provide. If you cannot afford to retain me, I can tell you I have books that I am more than happy to share with you and recommend with you that will help you understand the process ahead. All you've got to do is send me an email or pick up the phone and call me. That's my personal cell phone number, and I will respond to you and let you know how, what, what steps you can be taking to move forward. Now, the most important thing here is to express remorse. It's to understand all, the, all these people who are going to be judging you, they are going to want to know how are you phrasing your participation. They don't want to hear that you're sorry that you're going to miss your family and that you shouldn't go to prison. They want to truly hear that you have reflected and introspected on what brought you here. And I'm more than happy to give you a sample of the type of narrative that I, that I write for people and as I help them. It's a labor-intensive job because I don't know anything about the clients that I serve. I have to interview them. I have to learn their story. I have to understand the process of decisions that led them from where they were supposed to be to where they are. And if you have the skill set to do that, then it behooves you to learn how. To learn how to express your remorse to the judge so that he sees you as somebody who is worthy of the lowest possible sentence. You need to identify with the victims. You need to recognize that you cannot state at a sentencing hearing that there are no victims, that you didn't do it, that it's not your fault, that you know, that's not going to move the needle for you. You've got to recognize, start to think from the judge's perspective, not from your perspective. Think of the prosecutor's perspective, not of your perspective. Think of the people who will be judging you and figure out how am I going to respond 
to the attacks that they are going to make on my character? How am I going to help them see me as something more than the criminal charge? Talk about the lessons that you have learned through this process. Talk about how you have worked to reconcile with society and talk about why you will never return to the prison system. And it's very important that you just don't, you, you, you don't just outsource this to your defense attorney. You are the only one who can move the needle on this process. And that's what I really want you to be thinking about as you move forward. But I want you to know also that it doesn't end with the sentencing hearing, right? There's, a, there's likely that a sanction is going to follow, whether it's time on probation, time in prison, time on supervised release, uh, future work with your employers. All of these factors are going to influence your life. And you need to know how and what you can be doing today to position yourself for the best possible outcome. If you can do that, you significantly advance the ball in preparing yourself for success. Those are some of the areas that I offer assistance to people. Now, I can't help everybody. I have a full-time job. I devote a lot of my time toward pro bono work of trying to reform this system. I don't do the type of one-on-one -on -one consulting for how to shop in the commissary or how much can I spend and that kind of nonsense. I talk about success. If you want to go through the prison system and emerge successfully, I'm your guy. In fact, I am so confident that I am better prepared than anyone to help you prepare for sentencing and allocution, prepare to serve your sentence in the best possible environment, and prepare to come out successfully with your dignity intact, ready to begin and resume your new career. I'm so confident of that, that I encourage you to do your due diligence. Compare me against anybody else in the space because I have a record that will demonstrate the ways that I can help people with whom I work. I can't work with everybody, but for those with whom I can't work, I give a lot of free resources, um, with, such as my Earning Freedom podcast, or I give a series of books available for the readers in the world, um, film a lot of videos. There's a lot of information that I give away. I give away much more than I sell. But if you envision this experience as being serious enough, enough in your life that you need to make an investment to get expert guidance, that will help you prepare for sentencing, that will help you prepare for the journey ahead. And if you have a budget that will accommodate my fee, and I'm letting you know my fees start at $2,500 and they go to north of $20,000 depending on the amount of time that I have to work with you. I can't undo the past, but I can absolutely show you how to navigate your way through challenges and become successful. And if that's something that's important to you, I encourage you to pick up the phone, call me. I'm at 415-419-1728. That's my cell phone number. You can call or text at any time. You can send me an email, michael at michaelsantos.com or michael at prisonprofessor.com. Or you can uh, uh, reach me by, um, I don't know, send me, I don't know. That's, that's basically it, email or phone. In any event, I want you to know that if you're watching this video, if you have been challenged by the criminal justice system, there's a way out. It doesn't happen by accident and it requires you to take action, no differently from when you faced any other challenge in your life. That's what I had to share with you today. I am Michael with michaelsantos.com, and I hope you found some value in this, and I hope you take action. Thanks. Pick up the phone and give me a call.